Good afternoon, uh, good early evening. I'm Tawana Carlton, your host with Soul Cooking with Tea. I want to say happy, happy 4th of July. I know that you are probably out with your families uh, enjoying the celebration of the 4th of July, the independence. I just wanted to come on for a quick pop in. So forgive me if my phone is a little wobbly or my hand is a little wobbly. Nothing today wanted to work. I uh, had all the computers out and I could not get a signal. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to give up. I'm going to use my phone and just hold it. I just wanted to come in for a quick pop in. Look like I have a glare on my glasses so I can go ahead and take those off. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Happy 4th of July. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you're having an amazing 4th of July. Uh, we here on the West Coast are enjoying some beautiful weather today. Uh, for some of those that uh, may be watching, I hope that you are safe because I just learned uh, that it was a 6.4 earthquake uh, over by, I believe, Barstow. But it may have been felt uh, some in the areas of some of you that are my fans here on social on Soul Cooking with Tea. So I hope that you and your families are okay. But I just wanted to come in uh, for a quick pop in because, like I said, I couldn't get the phone, the thing to hold my phone up. My computers wouldn't work. So I said, you know what? That's okay. I am going to use my hand and hold the phone. Uh, thank you so much again, Jacqueline, for joining me. She said, uh, uh, hello, uh, Miss Dixon. I don't want to mispronounce your first name. So hello. Thank you so much for joining. Happy 4th of July. So... We didn't do any barbecuing because we barbecued last week. And so today we're just, you know, taking it easy and relaxing. But I wanted to come in because uh, as the summer has, uh, like we're in full swing of summer and things, the vegetables, you're being able to find fresh vegetables and all types of things at your markets. Uh, and I wanted to come in because I was thinking about my grandmother because uh, during the summer months is when we would go and we would pick peas, butter beans, okra, and so that she would prepare uh, for the winter. And so growing up, I, you know, I didn't understand at first, you know, we were always going and we was picking those vegetables and she was making sure and we had to shell those peas. Listen, that it was fun when we were growing up. But when you got to teenage years, you're like, oh, really? Do I need to be? shelling peas like we can't eat all these peas at one time but what i didn't realize you know as older as i got and i realized what she was doing is that she was preparing for winter and so we had fresh uh vegetables uh peas butter beans okra anytime during the winter months when you were not able to find those fresh vegetables and so i'm thankful that i learned that lesson and i'm thankful uh that i retained that because uh, during the summer months, like I said, you can find some amazing vegetables uh, that you can prepare and for winter. So you saw my uh, post uh, about it being a summer and preparing for winter. And so I'm going to turn my screen around and I'm going to show you some things I have on my table. I was going to come in and do a live, but like I said, nothing wanted to work. I couldn't get anything to hold my phone. And so I decided, well, I'm not going to be defeated. Let me put my glasses on so that I can see, so that I can see how to turn on around so as you can see on my table i have different types of cherries these right here are called bean cherries and they are supposed to be much sweeter uh, than the dark cherries right here uh, and i also have some sweet potatoes and i have a bag of fresh corn as you can see it has not been shook or anything so i'm getting ready to do that and like i said i have my sweet potatoes i have two different types of cherries i have dark cherries and right here i have bean cherries and for those that uh, follow me in and have watched my videos i think about two weeks ago i was talking about that newspaper so here today as you can see i have my newspaper out uh for today let me turn my camera back around so having my newspaper out, uh, let you know it's about to be some things going on here in Soul Cooking with Tea. So as I was saying, you know, have summer, summer vegetables, summer fruits. Uh, and I showed you the different types of cherries, the, the bean cherries and the dark cherries. And so with those cherries, uh, I love to eat. I just love to wash them and eat them. Uh, but there are so many things that you can do with cherries. You can cook those cherries. You can make drinks. You can make summer drinks, summer cocktails. So many things that you can do uh, with the cherries. 
And so if you would like uh, to know uh, one thing that, let me say this, one thing that I like to do is I like to make a summer drink. Uh, you can either make it just without the alcohol or you can make it with alcohol. And I call it a cherry mojito. Uh, if you would like to know how to make that cherry mojito, uh, you can purchase uh, my cookbook, uh, Cooking for the Soul, uh, for $7. Your donation of $7 will go... Um, will be donated to Girls Help Girls. And that donation helps us to be able to offer camps for young girls ages 10 to 17 to be able to attend camps and events that we have for free. So again, I will post it in the feed if you would like uh, to donate $7 to get a copy of Soul Cooking. I mean, a Cooking for the Soul. Sorry about that. Cooking for the Soul cookbook. And in that cookbook, you will find the recipe for our cherry mojitas and it is an amazing uh, summer drink or a summer cocktail like I say you can either uh, add to alcohol or not add to alcohol it is still a re very refreshing summer drink so on you as you saw on the table I also had my sweet potatoes and so the reason I have my sweet potatoes out because I know that the holidays will soon be coming Thanksgiving and Christmas and like I said, my grandmother always had her summer uh, when the man would come through on the street selling, you know, potatoes and fresh fruits and fresh vegetables uh, for the, those that that we didn't pick from out of the field. Uh, she made sure she purchased those from the, the guy that had it in his trunk or had it on the back of a truck. And what she would do is she would make sure that she got those potatoes, those sweet potatoes ready and prepared uh, for the holidays. And so I like to still prepare early uh, for my holidays so that I'm not pushing in, uh, in such a rush uh, to do some of the things. And listen, you can go ahead and prepare your sweet potatoes for your sweet potato pies because that's what I like to do is go ahead and fix my potatoes. I go ahead and boil them. I go ahead and season them. The only thing that I do not add in them uh, when I'm getting ready to freeze them is that I don't add the uh, eggs to them. So what I do is I take them out maybe the day or two days before Thanksgiving. And once I get it out of the bag, out of the freezer, I let it unthaw, I sit it in the refrigerator, let it unthaw naturally. I don't put it in the water or anything. I don't sit it outside of the freezer. I put it in the refrigerator and let it unthaw. So maybe, you know, two to three days before Thanksgiving, make sure you take it out of your freezer and let your um, sweet potatoes, you know, because you've already cooked it. You've already, you know, put all your, your sugar, your spices and everything and, um, in it and so I just sit it in the refrigerator so that it can unthaw naturally and so that's why I wanted to show you about the sweet potatoes and I was saying we are into summer getting ready and prepared for winter and so that that when winter comes uh, when the sweet potatoes may not be as sweet as they are right now during the summer months because they are very sweet uh, during the summer months uh, sometimes during the winter you can find sweet potatoes that are still uh, kind of sweet and you don't have to add as much sugar and flavor to them and so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and get my potatoes prepared for my sweet potato pies so that when thanksgiving christmas comes around i'm already prepared because i already have it in the freezer and ready to go and as far as the corn i'm going to uh shuck the corn clean it take all the husk and everything the hairs and everything out uh, and then I'm going to get me a bowl and I am going to take that corn off the cob, slice it off uh, because I want to make sure that during the winter months, uh, we have some sweet fried corn. And like I said, in the, the summer months, you can find some of the most amazing vegetables uh, to be able to prepare for the winter. Some, and you can also take the cherries and make jelly. Uh, some people like cherry jelly. And so you it's just so many things and so many options that you have uh, to be able to do. But like I said, I'm going to take that corn, take it off the cob. I have my bags ready. That's why I have my newspaper laying on the table because it is going to be a mess in the kitchen because I wanted to come in again and do it live, but nothing wanted to work. And then I couldn't get a signal. So it was just not working at all. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to be defeated. I can hold my phone and do a quick pop in here in Soul Cooking with Tea. We want to thank uh, you all for always supporting, coming in, jumping in with us. Let me put my glasses back on. I wanted to make sure 
I shouted out. Uh, I had a young lady from the District of Columbia uh, on Instagram. Uh, she made sure she DM'd me, uh, sent me a message from her husband, uh, Kevin Hembro. I hope I pronounce it correctly. His name is Kevin Hembro from the District of Columbia. And he's, uh, his wife sent me a message from him, and she said, uh, I make him hungry every week <laughs> with my display of food on Instagram. So I told her that I would definitely shout him out the next time that I came on live. So Kevin Hembro of the District of Columbia, I want to thank you uh, for being uh, uh, one of our viewers, one of our supporters uh, on Instagram. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Jacqueline, for jumping on with me. Thank you so much, Miss uh, Dixon, for jumping on with me live here. Uh, hi, that's my sister from New Jersey. Thank you so much, Weeda, for jumping on just in here talking about some of the lessons I, that I learned from my grandmother uh, living in Alabama, getting ready, having our summer vegetables, summer fruits, and getting ready for our winter. And so, like I said, just wanted to pop in and share some of my history, some of my memories that I've had with our grandparents uh, about preparing for winter. And so, you know, it is uh, essential that we teach our generations these generations behind us of these things that we've learned from our mothers from our grandparents some of you learn from your great grandparents and and it is it is essential that we pass those uh, lessons things that we've learned on to the next generation so that they are prepared and that they know uh some of what we've learned from our ancestors and so i am here today you see i'm kind of sweating because it's kind of hot here I didn't put the fan on, but I'm about to because I am about ready to get into these cherries and get into my sweet potatoes, making sure that I am ready for the holidays and having my corn uh, ready and prepared and in the freezer. Because listen, you never know who drops in, who may come and visit. And so I can remember that when my grandmother, our grandmother would, uh, somebody would drop in, you know, during the, the winter months, listen, she would always have fresh vegetables. We always had peas. We had white peas. We had purple hull peas. We had small peas. We had butter beans. We had okra. So, and and like I said, and she always made sure uh, when the man was coming through during the summer, we always had sweet potatoes. And during uh, the winter months, there would be some uh, times that the man would come through with sweet potatoes, but you had to kind of pick between if it was going to be sweet or not. And uh, most of the times that she got the sweet potatoes, she didn't buy many during the winter months. Uh, but we would have some sweet potatoes that were sweet. But in the freezer, we had exactly what we needed and she could just pull it out. And the only thing she had to do was uh, make some cornbread and pull out the freezer some meat. Uh, or, or we went to the store and got some meat. But it was always fresh vegetables year round. Uh, we even had collard greens, I can remember, in the freezer uh, also. So we had all kinds of things. And, and to this day, I make sure we still have a freezer, making sure that we have room in that freezer to put some of those fresh vegetables. And that's what I'm about to do today here on the 4th of July. Let me put back on my glasses. So again, thank you all for joining me here uh, in Soul Cooking for just a quick pop in of just sharing some of my... Uh, summer memories of growing up in Alabama, and I, now I am enjoying my summer, but getting ready for winter and being prepared. Again, I am Tawana Carlton, your host of Soul Cooking with Tea. Thank you again for jumping on. For those that caught me live and those that would catch the replay, have an amazing and a happy 4th of July. <music>